Hello and welcome to Daily News Capsule. Let's go through the important pieces of information that have appeared in the newspaper of today. So the first news is related to the death of a teenager in Kerala who has died because of brain eating amoeba infection. Now what are the technical details in this regard? The technical details are as follows. This brain eating amoeba infection essentially is or scientifically called as primary amoebic meningoencephalitis and this is a rare form of infection which affects the central nervous system and it is caused by uh, this amoeba this the name is mentioned over here uh, nigleria fowleri commonly known as brain eating amoeba now the pam uh, infection are not spread from one person to another so it is important to note that this infection is not a viral infection uh, it is uh, uh, it is it is it, it it becomes localized to the person who is affected by it uh, so this is the piece of information now this uh, this this characteristics of this amoeba it is a free living amoeba which is mostly found in stagnant fresh water uh, and it enters the body through the nose and it destroys the brain tissues and causes swelling of the brain now most uh, uh, Negleria fowleri infections reported around the world have been linked to bathing the, the, uh, and swimming in water bodies. So uh, although a sad news but then again with respect to science and tech uh, and with respect to the science and, uh, with respect to the syllabus of the examination the, the factual inf information with respect to this, this, this disease is important. Moving on to the next piece of information. Now this is related to the peace process in Yemen, the, 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 the distant peace that uh, the people of the Yemen want and uh, the situation in Yemen. So it is a long article and I have highlighted so much so the entire uh, article. Uh, but then again, uh, the important piece of information is related, uh, is, has been highlighted in by, by these parallel lines, these, these, these paragraphs which I have highlighted, these are the most crucial and most important. Uh, giving you a brief background, uh, this uh, the war in Yemen is, is, has, it, it's, it's, it has gone for quite some time and uh, please understand this is a Saudi led war, Saudi Arabia is leading one of the, one of the warring factions and it has completed eight years. Uh, uh, and the other party into this conflict is the Houthi tribe or Houthi community which is which has taken up arms against this Saudi led uh, war in Yemen. Now Saudi Arabia leading, leading a coalition of some Arab forces has initiated military operations on March 26, 2015 to prevent the Houthis, a Shia militia from the Shia community, it is a militia of the of the Shia community representing the marginalized Zaidi community and aligned with Iran from taking control of Yemen with which the kingdom shares a porous 1400 kilometer border. So this is uh, the starting point of, of, the, of the war. Now eight years have gone by and, and, and the Saudi Arabia led faction is, is not winning the war to be more, it would be more precise to say that they are not winning. So they want a face saving exit. So that is why they have initiated a dialogue process with the Houthis and, uh, and uh, in this process certain formalities have been discussed regarding a ceasefire and it has uh, been operationalized as well. But uh, there are certain challenges to the peace process and it has been highlighted in this segment, in this, in this paragraph, in these two, three paragraphs. And there are certain challenges have been identified by the author. And uh, the, for example, challenges come in the way of the peace process includes that how that the Houthis um, uh, uh, faction insists that the kingdom, the Saudi Arabia kingdom pays the salaries of all government officials, including the armed forces personnel for the last few years from Yemen's oil revenues, meaning thereby the Houthis are demanding that the South Saudi Arabians should be making the salary payment for the members of, of, uh, of, of the Houthi establishment in a way. Apart from this, the Houthis are also seeking compensation from the Saudi Arabia for war damages 
and uh, uh, which the which the which the Saudi Arabians are willing to consider, uh, but as a contribution towards the reconstruction of the country, but uh, they do not want it to be called as compensation, because that would indirectly uh, show to the world that Saudi Arabia has lost the war and it is the Houthis who are the winners in this in this in this conflict. Now the, uh, the, the, now, the crucial point relating to Yemen scenario is that Houthis have won the war, as I said earlier, and the Saudis are desperate to get out of, get out of the country. Thus, the Houthis have the upper hand in the negotiations, which the, the Saudis and the, and the PLC. PLC is this Presidential Leadership Council. Presidential, presidential Leadership Council is a Saudi-supported uh, governmental establishment in, in Yemen. And uh, the Saudi Arabians uh, insist that the Houthis should negotiate with them, with the PLC. But the Houthis are of the view that uh, that they do not want a mediator uh, uh, between the Yemeni factions. They they directly want to mediate mediate with the other warring faction. So this has again created a, a sense of of conflict. Apart from this, in this in this entire conflict, UAE has also uh, uh, jumped. United Arab Emirates has also uh, contributed in the build building up of this conflict, where the United Arab Emirates has backed the Southern Transitional Council and has uh, instilled an idea, has, has installed an idea that that the southern portion of the country, that is Yemen, should get separated like it was once previously. Uh, and it was known as, at, and at that point of time, it was known as the People's Democratic Republic of Yemen, and it had an independent existence as a communist country from 1967 to 1990. So UAE is also has contributed in into the escalation of the conflict, and the remainder of the article is is uh, is related to to that only. So uh, geopolitics and uh, you can say uh, personal egos to some extent have come up as, as a stumbling block into the lasting peace uh, which, is, uh, which is very much required in this war torn area of the world that is Yemen. So you can go through this, this uh, news article, a lengthy one but then again the highlighted portions would be, uh, would be, should be more focused upon. Moving on to the next one, this is written by, this article is written by M.K. Narayanan who was the former direct, director intelligence bureau as well as former national security advisor and this, uh, uh, this article is related to the recently concluded uh, uh, American visit by the Indian Prime Minister and this article is a comparison in at least the first half of the article is a comparison between the the the, the reception uh, which was received uh, uh, or you can say the pleasantries that were received by the Indian Prime Minister Prime Minister uh, uh, like uh, Prime Minister Narendra Modi the reception which he received the grand welcome that he received and what had been the experiences in the past of uh, by the, the by the former prime ministers like Nehru like Indira Gandhi Manmohan Singh so on and so forth the article makes a, a, a mention of the civil nuclear deal uh, that uh, that India and America signed, and it also talks about this one two three agreement uh, with this which which talk, which provided you know India specific India specific safeguards with the International Atomic Energy Agency, and uh, the author is of the view that it is the uh, single single mo one of the single most important. Uh, 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 you can say events of you can say milestones uh, with respect to India America relations in the 21st century. So you can go through this portion, this paragraph again over here. Uh, but then at the at, uh, the most important thing with respect to current day scenario is is uh, is mentioned in the concluding paragraphs, where the author strikes uh, uh, makes a note of caution, strikes a note of caution that India should uh, uh, should not consider itself uh, to be very much in a comfortable position with Americans. Why? Because Americans have changed their priorities and their friends uh, in, a very, in a very speedy fashion. So there is a swing factor associated with US foreign policy as the author, a seasoned diplomat, a seasoned officer at, uh, at one point of time, uh, Mr. M. K. Narayanan is sounding this note of caution. 
uh, so this uh, article is important for international relations uh, component of the syllabus and you can go through the entire article but then again the highlighted portions are the most important ones moving on to the next one this is related to this uh, telecom regulatory authority of india and uh, with respect to the social networking web websites now the telecom regulatory authority of india has put out a consultation paper asking if it would be possible for messaging apps such as whatsapp to be brought under licensing framework and whether such apps can be banned selectively in places where internet shutdown would otherwise have been imposed now why this is in news because in september 2020 the triad the telecom regulatory authority of india had recommended that there was no need to to regulate the ott communication services ott communication services are if the example of it would be whatsapp the example would be uh, the other social media uh, uh, communication platforms uh, the term ott communication services the explanation is the term for such apps that allow calling and texting over the internet Uh, and of which are uh, often with encryption that makes it difficult for anyone to access the content of the converse, uh, of the conversation so the the it the the article is important why because in september 2020 the the same organization try has said that was there was no need for regulations but uh, within a span of 3 years uh, approximately they have revised their stand and now they are uh, they are they have floated the idea that 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 selective banning could be incorporated in our system now why this has has have happened because with with respect to the internet shutdown now this internet shutdown again has become has come into news because of the the violence that is ongoing in the state of manipur uh and uh, for many many days in various parts of manipur internet internet shutdown has happened but then again this uh, entire approach or of try would be contested by civil society organizations and uh, and uh, uh, free speech proponents and again this is a, a developing story because this is only a consultation paper that has been released and if uh, the what all will be the follow up of this story obviously it would be coming your way whenever it happens but for as of now you can go through the the newspaper article specifically the concept or the terminology that should be remembered is ott communication services and uh, the stand of the revised stand of the 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 uh, organization that is telecom regulatory authority of india moving to the next news this is related to environment and ecology and this is regarding the test run of hydrogen fuel cell buses which would be happening this year now the as the article says the news article says that the buses are developed under a joint venture involving indian oil corporation and tata motors and uh, the test run will happen between delhi and faridabad and once the test run becomes successful uh, the director r&d of indian oil has said that it would be running on some iconic routes now these iconic routes guys would be between this uh, delhi and agra uh this this these iconic routes will routes uh, will include delhi and agra uh, stretch of the of of the road vadodara to uh, kevadiya where statue of unity is, is located likewise from tiruvananthapuram airport to tiruvananthapuram city now these are the these are the proposals on which these hydrogen cell fuel uh hydrogen fuel cell buses would be would be operated but then again the test run will be happening between delhi and faridabad and the important other piece um, important other important piece of information is that these buses have been developed by a joint venture of indian oil corporation and tata motors now uh, the what is hydrogen fuel cell the information a brief information is given in this portion that the hydrogen buses used in this experiment are like an electric bus in that hydrogen interacts with a fuel cell battery producing electricity and no carbon emission the hydrogen fuel buses to be developed are indigenously manufactured in india but the actual fuel cells are reportedly imported so this is the another piece of information uh, with respect to environment and ecology moving on to the next one this is related to cluster bombs 
and this has been in this is in news why because america is is uh, uh, giving another shipment of uh, military aid uh, to ukraine to to fight against uh, the russian forces now this military aid is uh, worth 800 million dollars <coughs> i'm sorry but the most important uh, uh, component in this aid package is that uh, this uh, this cluster munitions cluster bombs uh, cluster ammunition would be provided to the to the ukrainians uh, and the this decision comes despite widespread concerns that bombs this cluster bombs can cause civilian casualties and sparked a call from the united nations to provoke both russia and ukraine to avoid using them now cluster bombs are uh, you can consider it to be a, a a big bomb but within its body there are small bomblets which explode either on either in either near the surface or on the surface problem with this cluster bombs is that uh, the the success of 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 explosion is very less explosion of individual bomblets individual small small bombs is less and that is why much of the ammunition is scattered on the ground and there is always a possibility that a civilian population would be coming under under uh, uh, under threat for example if a bus is passing through that area and if it accidentally passes over uh, an, an unexploded bomblet then casualties can come into picture now according to international committee of the red cross some cluster mutations leave leave behind bomblets that have high rate of failure to explode up to 40% in some cases so this is uh, uh, again the 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 newsworthy pieces of information that came your way and uh, this uh, i'll i'll meet you meet you definitely in the in the next session uh, till then thank you very much